What's up YouTube? Today we're going to take another look at a Meta or Facebook SQL interview question. This one's marked as medium. Let's get into it. Now this one's called number of conversation and it's about WhatsApp, which is part of Meta. Our task is to count the total number of distinct conversations on WhatsApp. Two users share conversation if there's at least one message between them and multiple messages between the same pair of users are considered a single conversation. We have one table called WhatsApp messages which contains one row per message sent. That's the timestamp in there, date, message ID. That's how I get that it is one entry per message. And we have a message between U2, U1 and U2, which seem to be IDs for users. U probably stands for user. And we have a message sender ID and a message receiver ID. So we know who sent that message to whom. And as you can see, we have multiple entries for U1 and U2. We also have U2 sending messages to U1 later on and to other users. So that's what we have. Let's take another look at the question statement to be absolutely clear what we need here. Two users share conversation if there's at least one message between them. And our task is to count these conversations. So if you want to send a message to U2, and that's all there is. We count that as one conversation between these users. The other way around, if U2 sends a message to U1, we count that as conversation between U2 and U1 or U1 and U2. And that is part of the issue. It doesn't matter who sends and receives the message. We still count it. And if we were to count that pair U1, U2 and that pair U2, U1, that would be incorrect because we need to yeah, these are the same people, just one is sender or receiver, and it just we're just caring about conversations here. Multiple messages between the same pair of users are considered a single conversation, so even if there are 10 messages in the thread, in the chat, it still only counts as one conversation. That's pretty clear, but I think that the, uh, the issue here is who's the sender and receiver, not, not counting them twice. All right. So since it doesn't matter who sends that message, it still counts as a conversation, we kind of need to be able to say if there's a single entry of message sender ID and message receiver ID, only one message between them, we want to be able to only count these once. And in order to do that, we need to come up with a rule on <laughs> about which user ID goes first. So are we saying U1, U2 or U2, U1 in this case? And I think it makes sense. You could do basically whatever you want, but I think it makes sense to have the smaller ID or the smaller number first. So I'd say U1, U2 and say that's the identifier for that conversation. So we, would, we could concat these and just make that one combined string or just look at the pair, but we need to come up with a rule and I th I'd say for this one I'd take message sender ID should be smaller than message receiver ID and even though these are strings we would still be able to put them in order and say one is one comes first in the alphabet but if we were to sort it by al alphabetical order the lower one should be the one first and that way even if we have these entries u2 u1 u1 u2 we would be able to reduce them to one by saying message sender ID should be smaller than receiver ID. Okay. The other thing we need to do to be able to do that is to create that bidirectional conversation thread. So if U2 sends a message to U1, our pair would be U1, U2. But since sender ID should be smaller than receiver ID, we would filter it out. We wouldn't see it because U2 is bigger than U1. And if that was the only message of the conversation, we wouldn't be able to pick it up. So a trick that can often be done in these message questions or friend relationship questions is just to turn that order around and then append it to the table. So you just get a mirrored version of that table where you change sender and receiver and append it to the end. 
So that's what we're going to do here. I'm just going to write it out because it's always the same format. We're not selecting star, but sender ID and message receiver ID. That's our normal version of the pair, sender and receiver. And then we're going to do union to just append these rows below again in the opposite order. So we're going to do message receiver ID and message send ID. So we're switching around the columns and that should do the trick. We still need to say from WhatsApp messages for both. And yeah, what's going to happen is we're going to select these two columns from our original table and then those same two columns in the opposite order and append that at the end. And because this one is the first select statement of the union, it's going to pick up these column names. So it's still going to say sender receiver, but yeah, we're going to append the table again with those interchanged. So if we run that, we get a sender and receiver ID. Let's see if we can find the same pair twice. 67, I think it's cut off here. Or do we have U7, U6? We have U6, U7, and then U7, U6. But another thing that happens here is that union gets rid of duplicates. So it's like a set combination. And that way we only have each pair once. If I were to use union all, it wouldn't do that and we would have u1, u2 in there multiple times. I think I want to use union because in the end we're supposed to count the total number of distinct conversations and yeah that can be done by using count distinct at the end or just using union instead of union all and I think if it were a huge data frame or just table then it would be better to filter that out first and use union here and reduce the data here before we do that count. So that's our base. I mentioned that condition of saying and sender ID should be smaller than receiver ID. Yeah, if we select star from that, then we should get less pairs. We don't have, we have U6, U7, but we don't have U7, U6 in there anymore. And that way we get the amount of pairs. Now, if we were just to say count star, instead we would get the solution, which is the number of conversations between these pairs. Now the cool thing about this platform strata search is that I can just go to solutions from other users and look at how other people try to solve this question. We have one that is very similar to what I had, pretty much the same, but then here, the one that I upvoted by ULR 2009 is very interesting because I talked about using concatenation before and just making a string from sender ID and receiver ID. And what's done here is even more clever, I think. So if we look at this very short query, we can see that there's no subquery really. It's just count distinct. So yeah, we're going to have to count distinct conversations. But basically this comparison of sender ID being smaller than receiver ID is built into a case statement. And if sender ID is smaller than receiver ID, then we're going to concatenate sender ID and receiver ID in this order. And otherwise, we're going to concatenate receiver ID and sender ID. So we're going to do the same switch around thing, the same switch through as I did. But this is done in one case statement. So what's going to happen is, yeah, we're either going to select, basically, we're always going to select the smaller ID first. If the smaller ID is sender ID, then sender ID receiver ID. 
If that's not the case, then receiver ID is the smaller one and we're going to do receiver ID, sender ID. So we didn't have to do this union and then reduce it. We just switched them around directly in this case, which is very clever. And by doing this, we only have to select this one, this one column, which is a concatenation of sender ID and receiver ID in either order. And then look at how many distinct versions of this field uh, we have. And that's pretty much it. Very clever. Well, that's pretty much it for that question. If we look at the official solution discussion, the solution is going to be very similar. It just uses a CTE instead of a subquery, but the same ID being smaller than the other ID, ID <laughs> idea that I've been using and this other solution from that user has been using. Now, I found this problem very interesting. It uses union if you go for that solution, which is very common in meta interview question apparently. And knowing the difference between union and union all is something you can learn from this question. And I think that's something you should know if you're interviewing at Facebook or Meta. And otherwise, this relationship that can be interchanged of a user being the sender or receiver is quite common in other questions as well. If it's about friendship relationships or if someone accepted a friend invite from someone, that means they both are friends and um, not just one of them is a friend to someone. And yeah, same concept, very interesting one. Give this one a try on stratusrich.com. I'm gonna leave a link to that question below and that's gonna be it. See you all next time, bye bye.